The first impression of Hanoi is a cacophony of noise assaulting the senses. And although it claims not to be as bad as in Ho Chi Minh City in the south, this is doubtful. Lying in the north of the country, Hanoi is the capital of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Many of the health conscious population take their early morning exercise by the lake in the park. Within this mausoleum lies the body of Ho Chi Minh, the founder of the Vietnamese Communist Party and President of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam from 1946 until his death in 1969. He was the architect of Vietnam's independence. Some three hours drive from the city lies the spectacular Ha Long Bay, with its 3,000 plus islands rising sheer from the sea. However, sightseeing was not the main purpose of our trip. In fact, it was to visit a young boy called Duke, whom we sponsored through the charity Plan UK. Duke's home is about 90 kilometers out of Hanoi. Accompanied by our interpreter Lin, we stopped at this supermarket to buy various household supplies which would be of use to the family. We then continued our journey through the countryside. En route, we stopped at the plan area office. Here we picked up the regional administrator, and although we had police clearance in the UK, we had to sign more forms to the effect that we would make no attempt to see the child unsupervised or touch him inappropriately. We then continued our journey through miles of brickworks, a dirty and depressing sight. We were desperately hoping our Duke did not live amongst this. Nearing our destination, we first had to meet the local Communist Party chairman. Then came the special moment we had been waiting for, meeting Duke for the first time. As far as no touching was concerned, no one had told Duke. He hugged us on arrival and from then on, he had either hold of our hands or had his hands on our shoulders. <laughs> with the aid of Lynn, we had a good old chat with Duke and the family and learned that Duke would like to be a doctor. As we got to know him, we saw that he was a very caring boy and given the right chance in life, he would likely make a very good doctor. We were touched to see that all the photos we had sent Duke were on permanent display and also he remembered the names of all our grandchildren. Having now met all the family and handed over gifts we had brought, we had to have a meal with them. We didn't know what we were eating most of the time, but it was delicious. Our worries about drinking the local water were unfounded when we were told that the clear liquid offered was in fact rice whiskey but great care would have to be exercised. The family are subsistence farmers, so we stirred ourselves after lunch and went for a look around the small farm. Duke proudly showed us the family's enormous pig. It was clear, looking at the tiny fields, that they were scraping a living, growing vegetables and fruit trees. At this point, Grandad asked for his photo to be taken, first alone, and then with Grandma. Finally, some family photos were taken as a reminder of this very happy day. <laughs> Leaving the family was a sad moment. 
But then Duke took us to see the local primary school, which is supported by plan. Duke himself has to walk five kilometers to the high school. As with schools the world over, names and graffiti can be found on school desks. Remember? Close to the school was this kindergarten, built by plan. The children have just wakened up from their after-lunch nap. As always on these occasions, we had brought sweets with us, and these were distributed to the children. Then the children entertained us with charming songs. And so, with Ken giving a short speech of thanks to the children, we came sadly to the end of our visit. We're going to leave soon. It's been lovely seeing you all. We've enjoyed your singing. We've enjoyed your singing very much. We've enjoyed seeing you, your old pretty children, good looking children. Do uh, well. A very poignant moment as our time with Duke seemed so short and we didn't want to part from him. But now, when we write to him and receive his letters, we feel that we really know him a little. 
and perhaps with luck we will be able to visit him again. <laughs>